The identity of your work can sometimes become your Achilles heel. Like all of a sudden, like the sweet tooth mm. becomes so no notable. How how much pressure does that apply on you when you are going out and doing something? That must be mm. a pr that's, that's a heavy as the crown on the head, right? Well, you just get paranoid. It's almost like, you know, I've done some stuff out on this trip this time on the street and you kind of blast it out and then you kind of leave the teeth bit until last, you yeah. know what I mean? So I don't, and I just kind of <laughs> quickly fill them in and just try and move, you know? So yeah. it's sort of, you You just get a bit paranoid about it because yeah. it just takes one person mm. to be like, oh, it's him, do you know what I mean? Or they can be like, oh, you've written on my building or something like that, we hate you, we're going to kill you, or here you go, here's a pint, you know? It can be... <laughs> A mix, really? mix of things, you know, so people can be really generous and nice and then other people can be... But here now, it's like everyone seems to be quite positive at the moment, you know. Because we're dealing with internationals here. We don't just deal in the local area. Yeah. The guy bounces back and forth from Sweden to Europe to... Da -da -da, you know, you're yeah. busy, aren't you? Can, can Give us an example of, like, the extreme when someone's been really disheartened in, in bumping into you. Uh... At, you know, you're busy doing something and all of a sudden someone taps you on the shoulder or something. Not not happy with something that, of an experience with your work. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've never, I haven't really had them tap on my shoulder. So you usually run, run. But then um, it's always time, I've had sure. people, when I've done shows and stuff, and then just being really angry and saying, oh, this person's done it all over my building. And I'm like, oh, we'll tell him off or we'll just speak to him when we see him about it, you know, so, or usually I'd just be like, oh, he's just, I was just holding the can and he's just gone to get some food, you know what I mean? So I usually try and, but if they see you in the act, then that's it, isn't it? You can. Holding his up. can, <laughs> he's just gone to get some food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, as a friend Love of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a mate of mine. I literally, I'm just caddy. I, I literally yeah, just carry yeah. the bags. Bro. Yeah, yeah, that's it, assistant, you know. <laughs> what about the more happier times? Someone that's come up to you and gone, fucking... Here's a tip. You're fucking great, you know? Yeah. I don't know, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, people give you drinks and they sort of give you food and stuff like that. So it's quite nice, you know, that people kind of appreciate, you know, things. So then they could be like, oh, yeah, here's a free meal or here's mm. some food, you know? So that's always welcomed, mm. you know? So I don't know. You just get, get to that stage, you know? Mm. Yeah. What keeps you going? What keeps that? Because you've been doing it. For a long time, Bubba. Yeah, I don't know. I ask myself the thing. I'm like, why am I doing this every time I'm doing it? I'm like, I could be doing so, you know, I could be at home in bed and nice and warm, and then I'm out in the cold and I'm thinking, oh, fuck, well, why am I doing this? Still? But you're but, successful, though. But you know? just do do it because it's almost like you feel like this thing in you, yeah. within you. It's hard to explain. Really. It's probably like smoking or drinking or anything like that. You know, yeah. it's like it's like a habit and you get addicted to it. So it's like I never went down the drug route, I went down the graph route. Yeah. So I was almost like, really addicted to graph and that's where I get the adrenaline rush or whatever you want to call it so you mm. get this little yeah. you know pulse and you're just like oh yeah you know and you just feel like because you, you always know that feeling of like maybe it's oh you're gonna get caught you know this or whatever I'm gonna be able to do the piece and we're gonna get drips is it gonna be fucked is it you know is it gonna rain all it's these all different of that things stuff, isn't it? but all of that goes into it so then you sort of keeps you having a drive mm. but you know obviously life sometimes gets in the way so you know you, know, you can have different things that happen into your life and then um, it's different situations where you can't keep doing these things because obviously things happen mm. in everyday living so you just have to kind of deal with things and then for me it's like it's always been a cradle so even when I'm painting it's like you know sometimes I, like if I go through a bad time in my life I paint through it you know so it's mm. like if some shit goes down in my everyday life then it's sort of quite therapeutic for me just to blast out a piece you know so it's 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 almost like a therapy as well you know mm, big time yeah. things happen in your life that sometimes derail your, yeah. your creative juices don't they yeah yeah and it's, it's good that you have a process it's not just and 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 to do graph in itself is an art mm. like you say to get over that fence or to be in that street or to look left and right without trying to spill drips yeah. down a, you know it, all of these it's an art in itself isn't it so mm. it does act as somewhat of a distraction yeah yeah for the everyday 
Yeah. Which is part of the problem. But I then think. you make it part of the everyday. As well, yeah. So until you lose it, everyone around yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feeds into everything, you know? Yeah, it does, yeah. doesn't it? Do, 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 do your friends, um, those that are close to you or know uh, the, 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 the legacy of Sweet Tooth, do, do they... Do they appreciate it, or do they, or do they think to themselves, "Are you gonna ever finish doing this shit?" <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get that? I don't know. Like you know, I could get a proper job, but then I mean, what is a proper job? You yeah. Know? Fuck the proper job. Yeah. You know, it's like what what you know. I'm most of my friends. I mean, a lot of my friends are from a similar background as well. But then I've got friends that aren't in the same background, yeah. but then they appreciate it yeah. and they be really supportive as well. They so, must love it. Yeah. It's just like. One of them things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They must love it, though. I mean, you know, I've only just met you, and I'm just like, bro, like, fucking sweet tooth's in the building. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's a... For me, personally, and, and it, it goes with a lot of the guests that come on here, the contribution that you guys bring into the mix, whether it's graph bombing or street art, it's like... These are fundamentals that then go up the scale into big offices mm. uh, and... and with 50 years of hip hop coming next year, because, you know, wherever, what time you're watching this, that's what's happening. Without you guys, a lot of these brands wouldn't even know where to begin mm. because they're, they don't even realize, uh, you know, they're, they're influenced by it. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. I mean, I'm really thankful for hip hop. And then hip hop, for, for me, it's like when I got into graph, you know, like we were saying about the scoffing, but with, with me, when hip hop came and then all like that whole, thing with hip hop, you know, from fat laces to, you know, VW badges around your neck and all that lot. Belt and just <laughs> and shit, yeah. Belt buttles, yeah, the old name, yeah. belt buttles. But from from all of that and just that whole thing, I was at that age, which we probably were all the same, you know, where it kind of really sticks into you mm. and, you know, become thankful for it. Do you know what I mean? So mm. it's just like, you know, when I was, you know, I, I always thought like, every graph writer listened to hip hop, but like mm. now I don't know what graph writers listen to. They listen to all sorts of music. But Everything, then I, yeah. you know, I used to think they're like, oh, but don't you listen to like Boogie Down Productions or something yeah. like that? It's like, well, have you got this album, you yeah. know, EPMD? So you'd just be thinking like everyone's like that and you do you do your pieces about hip hop as well. Mm. So you'd be doing these little hip hop pieces and stuff mm, yeah, like that, yeah. and break pieces and stuff like that. So it was really nice you know, back then, actually doing that, or a big electro piece or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, you know. So you... But I think there'll be people out there that are surprised that you're into hip-hop as deep as you mm. are because the Sweet Tooth has become such a commercial... Vis- has such commercial visibility. Mm. I think a lot of people... And, and that's why, I, I guess, it transcends musical genres, it, graffiti, because it becomes such a part of the, 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 uh, of the, of the community and mm. of society. Um, and And... I guess that's what's made it easier for you to transfer into the exhibition halls and the, the galleries, mm. right? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, I don't, I just think I just do what I do. <laughs> really? You yeah. don't, and you don't pay too much, you so, don't, yeah, you don't watch nothing else. Oh, what, in, in the hip hop thing or the. Well, in thing, so, far yeah. as, so far as whatever is going on in the current climate of graffiti. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. always felt like you've, you've always been ready, ha- happy to jump. And yeah. happy to try something else. Yeah, yeah. And move a different way. Yeah. Well, I kind of, I, I, I love watching, you know, and I, like I said to you earlier about, you know, like years ago with the old graph mags and stuff, you know, it was all black and white. And then a lot of that was left to your imagination. So you'd see all mm. like Death and Easel and, you know, ACT. But there'd just be these old black and white, Photocopies mm. in the Big up my Sheffield so you, crew. You know so you, you you'd look at them and you'd be like, oh wow, I wonder what colour scheme that is, or this, that, the other. And you're really trying to figure it out. But nowadays with Instagram, you can see everything. But mm. then it's almost like, you know, when you see these people doing in America doing like mad blaster tags and, mm. you yeah. know, like roller pieces, huge, you know, yeah. Texas and Gain and like mm-hmm. smells and all the 907 mm. crew and stuff like that <laughs> from New York. And they're just like UFO cr- crushing it and just doing stuff. And it's just so diverse now. Mm. And just seeing the way people actually make images and people, how they get over mm. and like you know all in brazil the way they're climbing on the buildings and shit you know it's just you know when you see all that you do get influenced and it's almost like if you want to have a go at it or you don't but you just really respect it you know so mm. a lot of it is about respect and looking at what what's being done and then who's doing it and stuff like that as well mm. you know so i don't know if that answers your question. yeah it kind of does because i guess yeah. you see a lot of things that may have been repeated back in the late nineties and noughties from a from a street point of view, mm. um, but then there's always somebody with a different slant on something. Yeah, and like you say, the the influence of 
national and international artists now that you can look online. Yeah, you can see it all over the world, you know. Yeah. Right, click of your phone, just look and see who's, what's doing what. And it's quite nice in a way, but then it's... In another way, it's nice to have that old imagination and not see stuff. You know, it's mm. like a little bit of a balance, really. You know, I suppose if you're making music and you're listening to loads of music, sometimes maybe it's best not to listen to any music and just yeah. make your own beats, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it, like, again, you know, the likes of Pure Evil, Two Winds, Helch, all these guys mm. that are of the now. I guess it's kind of, it's a luxury to maybe not be in Shoreditch and get yeah. overly influenced with stuff. Mm. I guess, uh, what are your influences? What, I mean, what, what drives you to be in the studio creating? It can be a mixture of everything, you know. It's like I used to look at all the classics, like, you know, Vlaskis and Goya and sort of like, um, I like George Kondo now and just like different different artists and fine artists, you know. So you look at paintings and you can look at, you know, good films and stuff like that. You can look at, you know, look at like an old Western film, get influenced, you know. So yeah, yeah. it comes from different, things you know you could just see a little book in a junk shop and look at it and just sort of see an image in that and be like oh yeah that fucking triggers a painting you know yeah. so you, you, i think you just got to find whatever makes you tick and yeah. like when you when you look at things and even you know when you listen to music and stuff like that all these different things they all feed into it yeah you know yeah so it's just it can come from a, 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 it's sometimes it gets you by surprise you know yeah 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 totally yeah, and, um, and modern street art graffiti, graffiti, there, there, there is this transition of influences, isn't there? Mm. That, that in turn makes it more relatable for the the more commercial side of things and the exhibition houses. Yeah. I, I've got a friend who isn't into uh, graffiti. Um, big up, Dave, and and he he genuinely loves uh, graf- graffiti art, but he isn't like in it. Mm. And he, he was saying, you know, like, the exhibition houses are like the new record stores. Yeah. They're like the new gathering places. And I think exhibition houses are kind of lowering the tone a little bit more in a more credible way mm. that allows for people like my mate Dave and myself to yeah, actually yeah. frequent there and be a part of this thing where back in the day, you know, just to walk on a tube train and see the place bombed, you felt like it was immersive and you were a part of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we haven't got that. Now we've got these exhibition houses that, yeah. you know, like Co- Coag, um, yeah, and Camden, Camden, yeah, yeah. yeah and all the other, I won't run off the names, but they're a mm. lot more available now. Yeah, yeah. And then also it's that whole thing about galleries as well. It's like... You know, you can have a white wall gallery and it's all white and crisp and clean and you've got the little receptionist working there and it can be quite intimidating. Mm. But if you go into a gallery and it's like, you know, the toilet's fucking bombed up and it's all tagged up, Mm. feeling like the old Dragon Ball, then Mm. you know you kind of want a winner because it's almost like you feel like, oh, actually, they understand the roots a little bit more. And then, you know, I almost like the grimier the place, the better it is, you Mm. know. The better it is, right? Yeah, you know, you want cobwebs. You want, like, mm. well, not necessarily the better it is, but it almost... True. Aesthetically, you yeah. know, if you're hanging your pictures on some old fucked up wall, it, it almost feels a little bit more real, you know? 100%. I love yeah. that. That's the bit I love the most, is that you're you're immersed. Yeah. It's yeah. immersive. And then it's just, yeah, it's just like like-minded people, you know? It's like if you're in the same thing, you're going to put on a good show if you've got... Yeah like-minded people that want to do a show like that, you know? God, I love it. What's the future? What's the future for you, Sweetie? Uh, well, I'm I'm in Scandinavia at the moment. The future is I'm moving back to the UK. So I had some family family issues going on, so I'm going to be moving back to the UK, and then okay. I'll be around East London a lot more. So nice. that'll be my future. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> don't know where that lies, but I'll sort of be, be back again, really. Really? Yeah. Um, to to do to do what you and the likes of so many others do, you literally have to be about it, and sometimes that comes with a certain level of sacrifice, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. How, how do you how do you train yourself in your head to kind of be stoic in the sense that, okay, I'm back. If it's not square one, or mm. it's I'm back on the road, or I'm back in the UK, or I'm back somewhere mm. else, or I'm I'm in the I'm in another I'm in another one of these situations. Yeah. How do you deal with? How do you manage that? Do you keep it yeah. the art in mind? Is it all about the art? Uh, well, I think you just got to have balance, really, which is important. It's almost like 
you know, before I'd just be running around and painting and stuff like that. And then it's like you, you sacrifice things to the extent where you lose a lot. So I think when you have balance and understanding and then you can hold down a relationship and you can either with friends or, you know, a, a relationship with a girlfriend or something, you know, it's like it's important to actually have that balance. Um, so I think now it's like for me is like to to get from A to B and then to be here, but then also remember, you know, balance and stuff like that mm. uh, it is very important in Mm -hmm. the sacrifice because you don't want to sacrifice everything you know you need to kind of hold back a bit and then it's like I've not like I've felt myself it's almost like I see spots that I wouldn't have had a problem doing you know like few few you know not like when I was here last time you know mm. like oh just shimmy up there that'll be this that the other <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm a little bit older and then I'm just like you know especially if I've been drinking or something like oh do I really want to climb up there now or like mm. is that roof gonna hold my weight yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. almost like you think you're invincible but it just takes that split second and you, you just have to weigh up you know and I am weighing up things a little bit more and it's like a little bit like health and safety a little bit like oh it's dangerous you could fall and hurt yourself you know but which is true because like mm -hmm. I probably would fall and hurt myself so I've always had this like gut feeling and then it's the same when I've been painting I've almost like you know you go on your own you know drink water don't drink beer don't be stupid you know mm. Try try and be stealth about it all, but mm. then almost like you know, quit when you're ahead. It's better to quit. When the when going's you're ahead. good. Yeah, and then not like bomb up on the way home, get busted tagging when you've just done a big piece, you know. So yeah. I thought I'd always just try and be stealth about it. And that's where the addiction comes in, isn't it? That's yeah, where the addiction yeah. Comes just, it's almost like a mission. It's like being in the army or something, isn't it? You know. God, I love that. Yeah. Talking of which, before we do leave, uh, tell us a story. Tell us one of those stories where shit. I wish I would stopped when the going was good. Uh, well, one time it wasn't painting. It was like um, I'd done an exhibition, uh, and then a friend came with me, and I'd made all these wooden cutouts. So we went to uh, East London in the Wick, and then we thought, right, I don't want them in the studio anymore. I'm just going to screw them on a the wall. So we went on this rooftop, started screwing them on a the wall with this little fucking drill, like meh, 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 on a drill on a wooden ladder. Climbed up <laughs> all on this rooftop, made this like installation on this fucking building with all these cutouts next thing you know a police helicopter comes is like coming along going back coming along shutting the lights down and shit like that cop cars everywhere we're hiding inside the building but they must have had a heat sensor so two of us were in the thing they were going coming back going coming back and then these cops climbed up this old ladder full of woodworms snapped the ladder so we couldn't get back down they came up, shined the torches on us. They're like, what are you doing? And we're like, oh, we're just here putting some artwork for our girlfriends to see on the way to college tomorrow. So anyway, <laughs> then we <laughs> climbed down a fire exit to get down. We had to get down. We thought, all right, we're out of here. And then we're in a car park, and then fucking this window opens, and this guy goes, it's him, it's him, it's the one doing that, it's the one doing that. And then he pointed at another rooftop from an earlier day. And then uh, we were like, oh, we don't know what it's talking about. And he's like, oh, it's two weeks. When was it done? The police said, and it's like two weeks ago. And then they said, oh, this isn't two weeks ago. And then they let us go, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So right. the, the police just let us go, and then that was it. Wow. We got away. But it was like one of them, oh, it could have gone so nasty, you know. Yeah. But we got away, but it was quite funny. Sounds, it's very, like, sounds pretty on top, though, when you think yeah, about how many... Yeah, but even the helicopter, it's kind <laughs> yeah. of cost some money to get the helicopter out, so we thought we were going to get a bill for that. Of course but, you would, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was all right. They were good cops, you know. <sighs> Yeah, so it's always like it. you never know which is a good one or a bad one, you know. Mm. So sometimes they can really chill and then they turn nasty and sometimes they're bastards and then they're, mm. they're nice. You I know? might add, we do not advocate this on this podcast, by the way, so mind your business. And it's just a nice little story made up for your uh, audio pleasure, yes. But yeah, very much so. Yeah. You get good ones, you get bad ones. I've heard people get done for like 50 quid fines and stuff and their cans taken away. Yeah. And, you know, compared to what it used to be like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can pull you over a little sticker sometimes, you know, mm. and then... You got any weed on you? Then it's like you got done for weed as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about being safe and safe. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Out of, all, out of all the years, out of all the years that you've been doing it, what's been your favourite period? What's been the glory? What, what's been your uh, 
the, the glory of all of these, you know, stars and moons aligning with, mm. you know, the government being pretty chilled about it, with the with the opportunity of painting being sparse and you being yeah. quite, you know, out there doing it compared I to think everyone else. New York was my favourite years, going to New York and travelling there and climbing up water towers and stuff and hanging out with 907 crew and doing shows. <gasps> You know, that was the best years for me because it was always a dream to go to New York, you know, and mm. then to be out there and then working and seeing how that city pulses and getting the vibe and luckily enough to get and taken around with smells and stuff like that. And what? seeing, doing all the rooftops and lean overs and stuff. That for me was my prime time where I most enjoyed, you know. I mean, we're like fucking, what, 45 minutes into this podcast and then you fucking drop that bomb on me? Like, what? So talk to me about the pulse of New York. How did you, what was it, how's that compare to the UK? How, how's that, uh, the feel of the city compare? Well, I found like Bushwick and Brooklyn was a bit like Hackney Wick in a sense, but then, you know, you're getting the pizza slices there and you've got all the, the grime <laughs> and the fucking, you know, the, the stuff coming out of the, the drains. The all that dreamy the shit. Yeah, yeah, all those sort of like New York taxis and stuff like that. You know, oh, it's just... God. It's just pretty mad, but you just you kind of just got to watch yourself because it can be a lot different mm. <laughs> to being in Hackney Wick in a sense, you know. Mm. Uh, but it's just all the rooftops and all of that whole thing and just, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. It's, I just loved it out there. That's one place I'm going to return to, you know. Yeah, you have to, man. I, I feel like um, graffiti writers have the behind-the-curtain view of, of a city. It's almost like the, mm. the behind-the-scenes, Yeah, you know. You guys kind of got access to the city's prop houses. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just like when you're there, it's just like um, just the skyline and everything about it, just the whole vibe. That really fed into my studio work also. You really? know, it's like all the water towers and stuff like that, you know, all these water towers on buildings and stuff. When, when you're there and you actually see it and you walk around there and you find your little way around like Brooklyn and Bushwick and going over to Manhattan and catching the tr the train, going to Coney yeah, Island and stuff just like that. Just immersive. When, when you're in it and then you you know you see all the films and stuff like that, you feel like you're in this fucking big film set, you know, mm. it's just mental, like, you know, the sounds and everything, it all feeds in. Yeah, it's just, that's my experience with New York too, bruv. I just feel mm. like, you feel like you're in the centre of the earth out there. Yeah. Don't it? Just energy, innit? Yeah. It's just, it's just got a real kind of pull to it, but like, I don't know if I'd like to live there full time. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like a lot, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite intense when you're there, but it's it's really good though. You know, it's like like I say, if you're with like-minded people and friends and stuff like that, you can have a great time. Do you feel like life just flies past you? Because as a graffiti writer, uh, you are you're often living in the moment all the time, and things just take their own process. Mm. But life just keeps on, especially in a place like New York, it just keeps on giving out. Uh, it's just so fast pace. Yeah, it's really quick pace there, yeah. But then it's just like, I think even with graffiti, it's just like a, a language where it brings all these people together because we're all kind of doing the same thing, you know, like using spray paint and painting or rollers or this mm. or the other. But f for me, it's like socially, it's kind of been something which... You know, you can know people from all... It's probably like music, the same. You know, you know that person, you know that music, you know, you know. And the same with the graph, you know, you see all the names, you know that, and then you get to know the person and the writer and, you, you know, you kind of make a lot of friends along the way, do you know mm. what I mean? So it's quite a really sociable thing. Although it's an antisocial behaviour and everyone's like, oh, no, you shouldn't be doing that, this yeah. is antisocial. It's one of the most sociable things I've been into, you yeah. know, and I've met some beautiful people along the way, you know. Yeah, so have I, man. Community. is there, yeah. And these are... He's crazy characters in this Yeah, film. and, you know, just through graph, you end up having friends for, like, you know, 20 years or something mm. like that, you know, and you're still, like, as if it's yesterday, you're still good mates, you know? Yeah, and the 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 the, pala the, um, the the two worlds of, you know, Sweet Tooth the person and Sweet Tooth the artist. Mm. I love it when it really gets close together and you can really feel the energy of a person yeah. and understand why they make the moves that they do mm. because you know their character. It's some people are just like ADHD all over the shop and you can get it because when you see their tags, mm. it's like there's a certain temperature to, to even the way they create. Yeah. It's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've never been tested for any ADHD, but I've probably got a little bit of that somewhere. I in think me. every yeah, artist yeah. under the whether it's graph or anything, I think there is a yeah, level yeah. of that rep- repetition and and not wanting to stop. Yeah, I think it's in all of us, man. I know I've got dyslexia, so that's one thing I've got. Yeah, me too. Big so, up yeah. the dyslexia. Yeah, group. dyslexia. Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Numeric me. Yeah. So when you see <laughs> one and one is eight. When you see loads of e's in the suite, you, you'll know it's because I'm dyslexic. You know, it's like, sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, my brother. It's been yeah. a pleasure having. Okay. You on, my cool, man. man. Fucking awesome. Nice. So if you don't know about Sweet Tooth, now you know about Sweet Tooth. We're giving it to you raw every single week. Killer Keller podcast for music and street culture. We're all out. In was out of fashion. All right. Now remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. People, you stay lucky. Peace. Peace. <laughs> that was a beautiful.